The fight between Elio Gracie and Masahiko Kimura on October 23rd of 1951 was the first time ever a Jiu-Jitsu championship of the world was to be fought outside of Japan for the title. Extremely excitement all over Brazil. Newspaper covered it extensively. Even the Brazilian president, Café Filho, came to see the show. The fight was scheduled for three rounds of 10 minutes and was to take place at Maracanã Stadium at the time, the largest soccer stadium in the world that set 190,000 people. They took one of the goal posts out and filled up half of the stadium for people wanting to see the event. Uncle Carlos, my father's manager, insisted that Elio promised that if Kimura catch him in a good technique, my father would have to recognize the feet. In other words, don't let your ego go in there and have your arm snapped or your elbow hurt for the rest of your life because you decided not to tap out. My father understood that and said, no, I know, if Kimura catch me in a good technique, I'll promise I'll tap out. In fact, my dad had no hopes or no presumptions of thinking that he could defeat Kimura. He knew it was going to be impossible because of the, not only the sheer weight and size difference, but Kimura's experience he was the actual world champion at that time. But what he was curious to find out is what would Kimura know? What would Kimura do that he, Elio, did not know, that he wasn't familiar with? Therefore, he couldn't put a big, strong student to fight. He had to do it himself. He needed to feel it as a scientist. Right before they walk into the ring, as they're getting ready to climb into the arena, Kimura asks to an interpreter, is Elio going to tap out when I catch him? My father was a little taken aback by that kind of question, you know, kind of almost arrogant if you think about it. But then he said, well, maybe it's a cultural thing, you know? And he asked, why is Kimura asking this? And the interpreter said, well, Kimura doesn't like to go to sleep on the night after the fight, remembering the sounds of broken bones. So if you're the kind of person who's not going to tap out, you just snap it. You know, so he was being very matter of fact about this whole thing. He was being very casual. It's like, how do you want it? Well done, medium, or rare? In a sense, he was just being fair, being reasonable on that. My father said, no, if you catch me on a good technique, I'll tap out. Anyways, he climbed in the ring. And my dad knew that Kimura had a very specific throw called Ushimata that usually eliminated his opponents on the very first takedown. So Kimura would throw the guy down and land it with his shoulder on his chest, knocking the wind out of him primarily and basically finishing the fight right there, especially because of the huge weight difference. So what my dad did is as soon as Kimura got ready for the takedown, he made himself limp, offering absolutely no resistance. And the resistance. And that threw the champion off balance a little bit. And by losing his balance, he just kind of fell on the ground without having the chance to use the, the lethal throw. On that note, they fell on the ground and Kimura just played with my father like a cat playing with a mouse. Just literally overwhelming, doing everything he wanted, just doing everything he just playing with him. Except he couldn't submit anybody. He was slipping away like a little mouse, just getting away with everything. During that process, interestingly enough, there was a time that Kimura landed next to my dad, held him on a headlock, and he started squeezing his neck uh, very tight. So tight that suddenly Kimura let go. And he asked, are you okay? Pergo to my father, are you good? And my dad went like this, felt blood coming out of his ear due to the pressure on his chest. But there was nothing broke. He said, yeah, oh, we got him again. <laughs> just immediately you know, taking control of the situation again. In other words, he was a good guy. Kimura wasn't a bad guy. He was just being a good sport. Eventually, the fight went on, and Kimura landed on this position right here with the legs across my father's chest, like a bandolero belt, and the feet crossed, and he's squeezing very tight. And he was squeezing so tight, my dad couldn't inhale, he couldn't fill up his lungs to get air and breathe at that moment. The pressure was such that he was starting to feel he couldn't get air. So he remembered the promise he made to Uncle Carlos that if Kimura catches him in a good technique, I want you to tap out. So my father now is debating, knowing full well that it wasn't a technical move, it was just a sheer strength pressure move. If the legs were across my father's neck, it would be a technical choke. But because the legs were across the chest, it was just a, a squeeze. And I think that the old man would not be able to live with the idea of having lost a fight. And if somebody said, how did you lose? He said, well, he squeezed me and I tapped out. I don't think he would be able to live with that. So while he was debating if he should tap out or not, because he couldn't breathe, he lost consciousness. He literally went out, boom, cold. Kimura eventually got tired of squeezing, not, didn't see the result of the squeeze, not knowing my father is unconscious, let go of the legs, and eventually went on top to mount on my dad. When he let go, the circulation came back. 
My dad recovered, you know, in consciousness, and he said that by the time he woke up, Kimura was sitting on top of him on the mouth position, drying the sweat, saying, good, good, complimenting him, not knowing my father had gone out and back. Ta-da! The fight continued, and on the third minute of the second round, Kimura finally catches my father on the Kimura analog, named after him, was his specialty, and at that point, the adrenaline, of course, kicked in. My father couldn't feel pain anymore. The arm was sweat, stretched so badly that this hand, he said he was seeing this hand over here. Uncle Carlos sitting at ringside, seeing the arm twist more than it should, threw in a towel for fitting the match, giving a well-deserved victory to the Japanese champ. And, I mean, Kimura won fair and square. However, Kimura was so impressed with my dad's techniques that the next day he came to the Gracie Academy to invite my father to teach in Japan saying the techniques my father presented during the fight were so refined, they didn't have him in Japan. So losing to Kimura was the highlight of the old man's career to have this kind of recognition from the world champ.